Hi, welcome to a quick uh, video on how to use BitPaper. Uh, this is a project of Unity 19.3.2 and all I've done is import BitPaper. Uh, BitPaper is essentially just an Android Live wallpaper plugin. So this will enable you to use your project as an Android Live wallpaper. Uh, so the first step after importing the project is to go to File, Build Settings, and switch to an Android um, to the Android platform. Once this is done, um, you're ready to start. So what I'm going to do here is just quickly add the current opening scene and get started on making our first Android wallpaper. So what I'm going to do here is I think I'm just going to make a quick uh, cube. Next, I think we will make a a script to rotate that cube. We'll call the script rotating cube. We'll open that up. Once we have it open, I'm going to remove the start um, function. And I'm just going to add a quick variable uh, public vector three and we're going to call this rotate amount. Just a simple variable there. And then every frame, we're going to rotate the object by the rotate amount. Uh, and we'll just times it by delta time to make it by the second rather than by the frame. Now we've got our rotating cube script. So let's attach this to our cube. Let's give it a good set of variables. And let's see how this goes. Nice, so we can see our cube rotating. Um, I'm just gonna up the speed a little bit. Yeah, that's more towards the, the speed that we want. So I'll just copy the component and then paste in the, the values. Android Live wallpapers uh, with BitPaper work in the following way. Some game objects are only viewable within the app, while the rest are viewable when it's a wallpaper as well. That means that you can have certain buttons or GUI elements that are viewable when uh, you're your program is being ran as an app, but not as a wallpaper. And we're gonna use this functionality to create a simple button that will allow us to set the, the wallpaper. So let's go here, let's make a quick button and we'll go in, we'll just change the text to set wallpaper. It's a little bit small on our on our screen so I think I'll go up and just change the dimensions ever so slightly might actually just double them and see how that looks and then the text will probably need doubled as well yeah that that looks better um, I might make this just a bit bigger so that the text can fill everything up a little bit more. Perfect. Now that we've got the button set up, I'm going to make a class which will manage our game objects uh, depending on the mode they're in, whether or not they're in uh, app mode or wallpaper mode. So I'm just going to create a class here and I'm just going to call it um, state manager. Now we won't need a uh, update function as it will um, be decided on start whether or not we are um, yeah whether or not we are in uh, app mode or wallpaper mode so I'm gonna create a quick public list of game objects here and I'm gonna call them hidden objects these objects are the objects that are going to be hidden 
uh, when we are in wallpaper mode. So that's going to exist there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do bit paper functions dot. Let's see if we can import this. Here we are. Dot hide objects. Uh, I'm going to say this for mono behavior as uh, this requires a mono behavior to run. However, as bit, fun uh, bit paper functions is a static class, it does not have one. And then it requires an array of the hidden objects. So I'm just going to say hidden objects dot to array. And that's all that's needed in startup. This will manage uh, hiding the objects if they are if they need to be hidden if the app is in wallpaper mode. Very simple. And then here we shall create a function called set wallpaper. And this essentially will work for our button when we click it to set the wallpaper. Uh, this is pretty simple with bit paper functions again. Uh, we actually have a set wallpaper function. Uh, it requires the name of the app or the name of uh, what you want your uh, Google wallpapers to display the name of your wallpaper. So here I'm going to call it rotating cube. Very simple. And um, yes, that's our, our state manager set up. So I'm going to click off and then uh, click on our main camera once everything is done loading in. Perfect. Now we can see our hidden objects. One hidden object is going to be our button since um, since uh, we do not want that visible when we're uh, acting as a wallpaper. Awesome. Now on our button, we need to add an on click function. So let's click plus. Let's click uh, main camera as our, our source function, state manager, and set wallpaper. Perfect. Now we're ready to compile our application. So it's very simple. Click build settings. And then you click uh, build. You need to uh, choose a folder for it. I'm just going to put it in our uh, directory root and allow it to build. Awesome, the app has now been built. I'm going to switch to my phone view so you can see how the app will work on your phone. We are now on my phone, so I'm going to open up the app. It opens pretty quickly. I'm going to set the wallpaper. And it opens up the app in Google Wallpapers. As you can see, we are slightly offset. This is due to uh, me exporting the app at a, a higher resolution, but you'll see when I set the wallpaper, I'm going to set it as my home screen wallpaper. Then when we go to my wallpaper, it's working as intended. The button is no longer there and we just have our rotating cube. So that was a quick tutorial on how to use BitPaper. Currently it supports Android 7 and up. Uh, however, I have not confirmed Android versions below that, so if you confirm uh, an Android 6, Android 5 working with this, please let me know and I'll add it to the list of supported devices. This will support Unity 2018 long-term support edition and upwards, and um, it will also support the Universal Pipeline. So, thank you for watching and good luck in building your Android Live wallpaper.